Pilots. Thank you very much. I'm Dmitry Semichkin and let me start with looking at the origins of this question. Um, human communication is about speed and as we can can, can see technological te technological advances have become information easy accessible by a bigger number of people so that has sped up our communication process but we cannot say the same thing about scientific communication as the speed of its communication just begins to creep up and now we realize that to make sure that our society develops we need to speed up, we need to accelerate, we need to accelerate the exchange of ideas and exchange of knowledge and gradually we come to a consensus among consumers and providers of scientific content and this consensus becomes a foundation for various initiatives so thanks to consumers and thanks to providers of scientific information this system is getting more and more open it becomes available to a bigger number of people and this is how information changes into knowledge within the framework of all these initiatives which are not always legal by the way but these initiatives are rather about speed than anything else and they are truly truly fast and they're becoming more and more widespread, not only among researchers, but also among um, routine consumers of scientific information. So openness, transparency, easy access to this information has become a routine thing. And this is especially true for young people. I information is two clicks away from any young person. Even if this information is stored in libraries or, in, or if it is stored in old-fashioned publishing platforms where you need subscriptions, it is anyway within two clicks away. So that means that information is not getting converted into knowledge for these young people. So this uh, originating consensus helped us to put uh, to make available more than 30 percent of our publications it's like 1.5 millions of different publications so uh, so te technology means speed in these cases 22 million people read more than 100 different articles and publications within last year so that indicates a success and big investors are becoming increasingly interested in the project and their involvement is quite inspiring. It is inspiring us to scale up this practice worldwide. But building a new system of information, of scientific information, global system, is a great challenge, as we believe. We truly believe that in order to be up to this task, we need to ensure two things. First and foremost, it's we've got we've got to make sure that the system is trans transparent and it is trusted, it's trustworthy. Two years ago, we were talking about exactly the same thing. We said that we have to ensure transparency and trustworthiness of this system. <coughs> So regardless of, so we've got to be, make it transparent, no matter what angle you look at it uh, from. And we've got to lean on our legacy and heritage. We need to involve publishers into creating this ecosystem. Publishers should have their own place in this system. So existing technology helps, uh, uh, existing technology makes it available. <coughs> I'm not only talking about just communication uh, and we are communicating to achieve consensus. We do believe that based on this concept we will be able to build an infrastructure of a new type which will help resolve a lot of challenges of present day uh, scientific communication. We can reduce the cost. We can ensure availability of this information for everyone. 
that would uh, automatically mean speed of information exchange. And talking about blockchain, blockchain can help manage digital rights. Blockchain can help to ensure copyright and it can help with a greater number of different things. So if we have a, if the underlying technology is trusted, we can ensure trustworthiness and transparency of the system and we will get lots of other benefits from this. We can we will be able to make research more efficient. We can avoid we, we will resolve the challenge of reproducing the results of scientific experiments made elsewhere. Um, just to wrap up, I would like to address the key question asked by the moderator of the session. So to what extent has the scientific communication system changed today? And what will happen in the future? Scientific communication is becoming increasingly faster, but not as fast as we would like it to be. And uh, quoting our moderator, our society is stalled on its way to the no-sphere. And we're stalling ourselves, in fact. And in order to step up, in order to get access to a completely new, that's a bandwidth of um, speed, we need new infrastructure. And this infrastructure needs to lean on existing systems, on existing heritage. We are quite optimistic about the prospects of this system. It will become real. It will come true. And this will mainly happen due to emerging consensus and due to technological development. And we can see that technology is developing at extremely fast pace. So we are living through very interesting times. Thank you. Thank you very much.